Normal distribution is a continuous distribution. It is used to model a lot of measures in the real world, such as exam scores, people's heights, and etc. There are two parameters for normal distribution. The mean, mu, and the variance, sigma square. If random variable x is a normal distribution, we write it as, x, tilde, n, brackets, mu, comma, sigma square. Be careful here that the second parameter is the variance. If you want to get the standard deviation, you need to get the square root. The probability density function of normal distribution is this. You don't have to remember it. The graph of the probability density function is called a bell curve. It's symmetric about mu. Here is a graph of n, 3, 4. You can see that it's symmetric about 3, and also has highest probability at 3. Since it's symmetric about 3, half values are less than 3, and half values are greater than 3. 3 is the mean, median and mode. We already know that in normal distribution, half values are less than mu, and half values are greater than mu. Mu is the mean, median, and mode. Now let's look at three other important properties of normal distribution. Two thirds of the values are within one standard deviation of the mean. You will see the phrase within one standard deviation of the mean a lot in normal distribution. This means x is between mu minus sigma, and mu plus sigma. If we put it on the graph, we can see that this range covers two thirds of all values. 95% of the values are within two standard deviations of the mean. This means x is between mu minus 2 sigma, and mu plus 2 sigma. On the graph, we can see that this range covers 95% of all values. 99.9% .9 of the values are within three standard deviations of the mean. This means x is between mu minus 3 sigma, and mu plus 3 sigma. On the graph, we can see that this range covers almost all values. Now that we know the properties of normal distribution, let's see how to sketch a bell curve based on those properties. Here's a normal distribution, n, 5, 4. The mean, mu, is 5. The standard deviation, sigma, is 2. The center is 5. It has the largest height. We mark this point. 99.9% .9 values are within three standard deviations of the mean. Mu minus 3 sigma, is 5 minus 3 times 2, which is minus 1. Mu plus 3 sigma, is 5 plus 3 times 2, which is 11. The height at these two points are almost zero. Two thirds values are within one standard deviation of the mean. So at point 3 and 7, the height is about 60%. With these five points, we can sketch a bell curve. Try to make it as symmetric as possible. Variance determines the spread. So normal distributions with the same variance have the same shape. Let's look at two normal distributions, n, 1, 4, and n, 5, 4. We can see that their centers are different one at one, the other at five. But the shapes are exactly the same, because their variances are the same. Distribution with a larger variance spreads out more. Since the area underneath the curve is always one, if it spreads wider, its height must be lower. Therefore, normal distribution with a larger variance is lower and wider. Let's look at two normal distributions, n, 5, 4, and n, 5, 9. We can see that their centers are the same. However, one spreads out wider than the other, and its height is also lower. So when you sketch two normal distributions, pay attention to both the mean and the variance. The mean decides the center, and the variance decides the height and spread. In this class, we learn normal distributions. It is written as x tilde n brackets mu 
comma, sigma square. The graph of its probability density function is called a bell curve. It is symmetric about the mean. Two-thirds values are within one standard deviation of the mean. 95% values are within two standard deviations of the mean. 99.9% .9 values are within three standard deviations of the mean. Sketch with five points. Distribution with a larger variance is lower and wider.